Hello everyone, I'm Bartolo for Gallery Teachers and we are producing a series of videos about TEFL, that is teaching English as a foreign language. Today we talk about job opportunities and uh, this video will be especially helpful if you are an English teacher, but it applies to more or less any industries. You studied, you took your qualifications, and now what? How do you find your first job? Our very special guest for today is Megan Woomer. She is uh, the center manager and the course director for TEFL in Italy and TEFL in Spain. Megan, thank you for having accepted our invitation and uh, welcome to our show. Well, thank you so much for having me today, Bartolo. I think it's so important to connect uh, nowadays during this pandemic when it's difficult to reach out to, to other people. So it's wonderful um, to be able to have a chat today with you and uh, spread the word out there on your uh, global community. You have two centers, one in uh, Rome and another one in Malaga. Where are you at the moment? At the moment, I'm in Malaga in Spain. Um, the weather's beautiful today, um, but I get to go back and forth between the two centers, which is wonderful to see how the market um, for TEFL teachers is going in both countries, because I think it's important, um, like you mentioned before, that we're not just um, giving students a certification, but that it's a useful one that they can um, reap the benefits from as soon as they're finished the course. Where are you from? Um, I'm originally from New York, uh, from the States, um, but I moved abroad 13 years ago and uh, really never looked back. Um, I started my own TEFL journey and now I love helping teachers get started on, on their own journey and, and to live abroad if that's their choice. And uh, at the moment, do you have any restrictions with uh, coronavirus in place, with uh, Brexit in place, with I don't know how many things in place? <laughs> the name of the game right now is just being flexible. That's all we can do. Um, but here in Malaga, I'm happy to say that um, we're allowed to be delivering both face-to-face -face courses and online. So we're currently able to offer our um, CERT TESOL qualification uh, in person, online, or a blended option. Um, all restaurants and museums uh, are now open till 9.30, so we feel very privileged here. Um, as far as travel goes, um, that's really changed the kind of profile of students who are coming to us to, to get their TEFL uh, certification. So in the past, we did have a lot of um, students coming in from abroad, but now we're actually tapping into our local markets and seeing a lot more um, Spanish students and Italian students uh, wanting to upskill during the pandemic, which is, which is awesome. Do you think, do you have the impression that the profile of the teacher uh, will uh, change in the future? Uh, yes and no. Um, yes, in the sense that we're al already seeing that. In the past, um, it was kind of something to add to your CV. Um, oh, when I move abroad, when I retire and move abroad, uh, then I can teach English in, you know, some, some wonderful country in South America or Asia. Um, and so I think there's still hope that, you know, after the pandemic, um, that those uh, will still become our bucket list desires again. Uh, but right now, um, definitely, I think that uh, students, um, the profile is more of one that, hey, I, uh, my, my job before um, is no longer, or um, I have less income. So now I want to get the certification to allow me to teach immediately. So instead of something to have in the future as a cushion, it's something I want to use now, which I think uh, makes it all that much more important to talk about careers, to talk about what happens next, because it's imminent. Um, I have students now coming on to our TEFL courses who ask day one, uh, what, are, what are my career options? And usually that's something we talk talk about in the last week of the course when they're almost ready to graduate. So now it's something that we're having to address almost uh, on the first day. Let's draw a line with uh, the pandemic. So before the pandemic, we had more academic teachers, while now we have a new generation of uh, teachers. Somebody that does teaching as a, a second job or part-time or to find a second income. So what's the, the typology of uh, your students? Well, um, our students really range, and I think that's what keeps it so interesting. So we get students who are fresh out of high school, um, maybe don't have much experience with teaching or even in the, um, having a job type setting. And this is a great first step for them because it gets them prepared for furthering their education or for jumping into the job market if that's what they'd like to do. 
Um, so we're seeing a lot of those students. Um, and we're also seeing a lot of students in their 30s, 40s, and 50s uh, who are coming to us, um, as you said, to supplement their current income, or maybe to make a career change, um, because maybe their previous job um, is no longer because of the pandemic, or maybe just because they're interested in, in changing things up. Um, we all get tired of, of getting in, in that rut, and maybe you know this is something new um, in the cards that they can they can learn some new skills and put them into practice. How has your job changed uh, since the pandemic? Because before we used to work mostly uh, face to face, now it's shifted everything online. My feeling is that online will stay, but in the future, we'll have an hybrid, something in between what we are having now and what was in the past. How did you adapt to this new situation as a company? Yeah, great question. I think it, it was something that we had to react to overnight um, to be able to keep the business afloat. And just as I ask my students to be flexible in the classroom, you know, you don't know how many students will show up for your lessons or what questions they'll ask you. You know, we've had to put that into practice as a business and be flexible. So um, we've had to put our offerings online um, and train up our teachers as well and our tutors to be able to deliver input effectively online and and to equip our students with the schools they need uh, the skills they need um, for an ever-changing market so I think it's it's just that it, it's um, given us a chance I think to as tutors as um, center managers to really um, further our own skills when it comes to working online when it comes to networking and reaching out and seeing you know what what's going on what uh, technology is out there that we can be using to deliver um, the same quality classes we delivered face to face online um, and how we can connect with communities around the world to support um, the process because uh, it's been a stressful one um, you know going through the pandemic and uh, you know getting a qualification juggling uh, work and family all at home um, so so yeah I think support um, is a is a great place developing a professional support network um, reaching out to these wonderful job groups um, that are online on Facebook on LinkedIn so all of these have been really helpful along the way for both us and for um, our students taking our, our TEFL certifications. I think personally that we are living a situation where we have to reteach teachers um, how to teach English especially because what I noticed that we are doing at the moment is uh, shifting what we did face to face online at a certain point, we will understand that having an online class is not like having a real class. Do you have any tips on uh, this particular issue? Yeah, um, you know, I agree. I think, you know, you look around and technology is constantly changing. Um, you know, we see new cars popping up, uh, new phones, all of this. And teaching has stayed the same for, you know, thousands of years. So I think this is a great opportunity to kind of um, not reinvent the wheel, but definitely try and bring in some, some new uh, approaches to teaching. Um, we have to also take into consideration, I think, that uh, we're spending a lot more time in front of our screens, up to eight hours a day. So our attention span has gone down um, as a result of that. So I think teachers are having to be more creative with designing their classes and choosing uh, what materials to deliver. And not only just using um, the online platform, but finding uh, different little applications or activities or games that they can incorporate into their lessons as well. Um, so, so yeah, I think it's a great opportunity and I can say that I am very impressed by our teachers and how much creativity they're putting into it when, as you said in the past, they were scared maybe to turn on the projector in their lessons and now they're teaching lessons online and, and they've done so pretty much overnight. So I'm, I'm very impressed by how fast um, they're putting these new skills into practice. So it's really encouraging, I think, for the future of teaching online. You mentioned multitasking. This is something that usually women are very good at and men are not. In fact, I noticed that uh, among our pro members, a good majority is women. Do you think this working online will uh, cut off men and encourage women on uh, working uh, as a teachers? 
No, not at all. Um, I think it just uh, shows us that we need to be really organized, um, you know, approaching things with um, smart goals and objectives and um, checklists. And I think um, getting organized is, is necessary nowadays because it's not just organized for your lesson. It's organized for maybe teaching online and maybe you're even creating your own business online. Um, you have to be organized with uh, reaching out to new people on social media, on, on networking. Um, so I think uh, this is a really important skill to have to, to get organized with your admin um, because um, we're seeing a lot of our students graduate now and instead of working for companies, they wanting to start their own business. So I think putting these skills into practice in an online lesson that requires you to be looking at many different tabs and boxes is applicable to what's going to happen uh, after the course when they're running their own business maybe. By the way, we have a job board on uh, guideteachers.com. We are hiring. So um, if you are looking for a job, have a look uh, at our job board. And uh, do you have a job board? We do as well. We have one for our graduates and we also have a lifelong career service that we offer for them to help them along the way. Is it open for everybody or just for your students? Uh, our job board is open to our graduates but we do uh, encourage other students to, to reach out to us so that we can help them um, because we know that a lot of centers maybe don't offer a career service so we're there to point them in the right direction even if they don't um, come from uh, our graduates or our alumni. The website is? Uh, they can go to uh, tefilinitaly.com or tefilinspain.com for more information. We have uh, a forum and uh, I ask our members to uh, make your questions for you. So um, I will read uh, a few of uh, their questions. The first question submitted throughout our forum. Uh, I had to find it. Uh, anyway, the, the point of the question was that in UK is fairly easy to become self-employed. So it's not expensive. The accountancy is easy to do. In uh, places like Italy and uh, even Spain, I know it's more complicated. So you have to pay a lot of taxes up front. Uh, you need an accountant and this means more expenses. So as soon as you decide to start, you have to put money on things that you don't really need. Well, you should put the money, the little money that you have in promoting your activities. And uh, this makes everything very scary. Can you give some advice to uh, the people that are based in uh, these countries where it's more difficult to become uh, self-employed and entrepreneurial? Sure. Um, well, I think that's a great question. It's a, it's a big concern. And I think the first step is, you know, going back to that multitasking and uh, admin and doing your homework. So how much is it going to cost you per month to be self-employed so you can have an idea of how, how much that translates into classes? Um, how many classes do you need to teach a month to be able to, to make a living off being um, a freelance? Um, apart from that, I would, be able, I would suggest uh, reaching out to local businesses um, what we don't realize, I think, is a lot of local businesses have set aside a budget for training for English lessons for their own employees. Um, so why not tap into that and get a business on board um, that you know that's going to be a steady flow of income for you. Um, and you might have some nice group lessons that come out of that as well. So I would really um, encourage uh, students to uh, reach out to local companies, uh, word of mouth and that to hopefully build up some nice uh, group lessons uh, in, in that sense. Because you want to make sure that uh, you are covering our, all your costs um, at the end of the month, definitely. Thank you. Good answer. Another question submitted from uh, our forum. When it comes to teaching English, the discrimination between native and not native speakers and the lack of opportunities for not natives are a very common issue. How do you deal with it with uh, your students? Because I guess you are working with uh, non-natives uh, mostly. Both native and non-native speaking teachers on the course, definitely. I think um, that's an awesome question, and that's one of uh, the points that I am very passionate about. And I think it boils down to education. We need to educate not only um, the students coming to us to take our, our CERT TESOL courses, but also to all of the um, language institutions who are um, looking for teachers and have these typical job advertisements that say um, that they want native teachers or teachers from 
specific countries. Um, so the first thing about education is that it's actually against EU rights. It's, it's discrimination um, when it comes to advertising for a position for only native speaking teachers. Um, so um, there's a, a great organization called TEFL Equity um, that I would encourage everyone to go become a member of. They have an awesome Facebook group and um, web page, um, and that's run by Marek Kichkoviak. And uh, Marek uh, has an awesome wealth of resources there and downloadable free PDFs where teachers can find more information on that as well to help support them in the job search if they do come across this discrimination. Um, but as far as an institution, um, when we at um, TEFL in Italy and TEFL in Spain receive um, offers from companies, um, to put positions, job positions on our job board, um, we refuse to post any that do uh, only um, say native speaking teachers. We, um, we have a, a dialogue or we like to reach out to that company and, and say why we refuse to do that and maybe suggest how they could reword um, their advertisement to be more inclusive. And I think that's just so important um, to being more inclusive and to educating everyone that it's not okay to continue down that route and that a qualified teacher is what we're looking for um, at the end of the day. Another question that I like, uh, you partially responded to that, but um, working for someone else or going solo? Oh yeah, pros and cons to both. Um, I think working for someone else um, is great. Uh, in the sense that you get support from an organization. Maybe they have in-house training that they can give you. Um, maybe they give you a budget so you can attend some cool webinars or conferences and connect with other teachers. Um, so I think that that's fabulous to do that, um, to work for a company. Um, what are the downsides maybe? Well, um, it's not as flexible in terms of timetables. Um, you, you have to stick to the admin of that organization as well. Um, so that could be motivation for going solo. Um, so that would be the pros to that, in my opinion, are setting your own timetable. You say exactly at what time you want to be teaching and, and to whom. Um, I think you need to have a lot of dedication, a lot of drive for going solo. Um, and definitely try and reach out if you are going solo to these great um, support groups uh, on Facebook or in your local community so you get support from someone um, when you are feeling maybe uh, a bit down uh, or things aren't going as well or you need a bit of that motivation boost there. Another one that I like, okay, this is challenging. So get ready because it's a, okay. this is a tough one. So okay. your school is associated with uh, Trinity College of London that is uh, one of the most recognizable brands in uh, the TEFL industry. This partnership requires a lot of time and energy to develop. Your students will uh, not have this uh, competitive advantage. So how can they find their customers? Yeah, well, that's, that's a good question. I, it does take some, some time to become a, a Trinity validated uh, provider. Um, but I think we've, uh, as a company, put that time and energy into that so that we can um, give our students this extra uh, boost um, to their qualifications. So they go out there at least backed um, by not only us, but by Trinity College London, and they have that seal on their on their certificates to, to help them. Um, so I think that does give them a leg up. So to get a qualification, um, I, would, I would suggest that to anyone out there, get a qualification. Um, add that to your CV because um, that's something to support you to fall back on to have um, a well-known company there to provide you with a letter of recommendation or talk to a potential employer on your behalf. So I think they already have a, a, a leg up, um, so to speak, in that area. And uh, Apart from that, I think that they definitely then need to look into continuing their professional development after they get off the course. So um, they get off the course on a high, um, they just learned all these new skills. So keep the ball rolling is always my, my motto. So, you know, reach out to people, um, go to a conference, go to a webinar, enroll in a course, whether um, it be a paid one or a free one, there's a wealth of courses out there. Um, so just keep things moving, keep that momentum going so that you can show to future clients or uh, future employers that, that you're active, that you're out there. You're not just waiting for the jobs to come to you, but you're actively seeking those jobs 
jobs and you're um, continuing with your with your learning as well. Yeah, and uh, I would like also to add that having a teaching qualification doesn't mean just that you will teach English and that's all. I think having a teaching qualification opens your mind. I took my teaching qualification and after several years, I started teaching people how to behave with their dogs. So something that is not related with uh, English, but at the same time, this is an idea I wouldn't have had if I didn't have my qualification. Once you have it, you start thinking about different things that you can do. I think that a lot of people, um, a lot of students who have taken uh, our course, it's been a long time maybe since they've been in the classroom or been studying and it shows them that they're capable of so much more that they really get to um, kind of step out of their comfort zone. And um, I too, I teach yoga as well as teaching teachers to teach English. And I think there are a lot of skills that are transferable there. So so yeah, I think it, it's, it's just motivating um, students that that they've only begun on their learning journey and there's so much more out there um, in life that they can tap into and they're capable of it so yeah it's a really motivating experience overall i agree with you um we had other questions but you covered them thank you very much for your time can you make a promo for your company take advantage of uh, uh, this interview to say whatever you want Here at Tefl in Spain and Tefl in Italy, um, we kind of pride ourselves in offering teacher training to a whole host of um, students and of different uh, potential clients. So um, if you're looking for getting your initial teacher training, you have no experience, we're ready for you. We're ready to help you there. If you already have experience in the classroom, but maybe it was a long time ago and you're feeling a bit rusty or maybe you're in a rut in the classroom, we have a TEFL refresher course for you. Um, and if you're thinking of going into a future of becoming um, a teacher trainer, getting into material materials design, um, starting your own business, we'll soon be offering the CERT PT, which is a level six Trinity qualification. Um, so we hope that we have something for everyone out there um, to help them become uh, a teacher and move on with their teaching careers. Thank you, Megan. It's been uh, really nice to talk to you. And uh, that's all for today. I'm Bartolo Ansaldi for Gallery Teachers. And today we had uh, Megan Woomer. If you feel you want to say something important to the TEFL community, feel free to write it us at editorial at galleryteachers.com to write an article for our blog or getting interviewed for uh, this channel. That's all for today. Thank you. And until the next time, happy teaching and happy learning.